five to seven minutes uh, just to explain to you uh, the science of vaccines, how it works, um, and a little bit about uh, the vaccines that you would expect to receive uh, here in the US. So how do vaccines work? Basically, uh, when a new pathogen or a disease uh, enters into your body, uh, it introduces something called an antigen. Uh, and when you have an antigen, you actually need a very specific soldier or antibody uh, to actually uh, grab onto it and then destroy it. So in the process, uh, when you have a new, completely new disease, which is a new uh, virus, you really don't have that soldier or the antibody. And so what you need to do is that um, that's why we have vaccines. Vaccines are part of that training. It trains your soldiers, your antibodies, uh, your immune system by using a, just a harmless form of the virus. And so you inject it in uh, and then your various types of soldiers, uh, you have your B cells, T cells will get stimulated. It learns, it figures out how to uh, defeat, how to detect um, that pathogen. And when it comes in the next time, it can actually deal with it. So it has, it, it creates some sort of immune memory in your system. Uh, and if you encounter in the future, you can then deal with it. Uh, there are various ways that a vaccine can be made. Um, very commonly, uh, people use uh, the whole virus or the whole bacteria. Uh, you can also use parts of it. Uh, but nowadays, a, a latest technique is to just use the genetic material. And so when you hear um, it said the mRNA vaccine, that's because they're simply focusing on the genetic material. It injects the genetic material uh, into your cell, not into your, ge not into your um, genetic, it doesn't fuse with your own genetic material, but it uh, goes in there, it, cre uh, it is able to produce um, protein that then acts as that trainer for your soldiers and it, it basically tells them you know that this is what it looks like and it, if it comes in uh, you can fight it. So that's how vaccines work in, in a kind of a general theory. Uh, in terms of the current COVID vaccines in development there are about 200 um, and uh, vaccines de are developed through stages. So you have a preclinical stage, phase one, phase two, phase three, and typically after phase three, many drugs are approved after phase three. Uh, but for vaccines, uh, sometimes, you know, you have to test on a much wider population so it can go up to phase four. Um, again, you can see that this is how uh, the, the stages of the vaccine is developed. Uh, you get increasingly bigger populations. So you initially start with animal models. You make sure that it's safe. Then you move on to smaller populations of about 100 people. Uh, you really at this point want to monitor for safety and you're not going to move on to the next phase until uh, they have made sure that all of these people that's completely safe, then they move on to phase two, which is a larger population that would look both at safety and look at effectiveness. So they have to make sure again that it's not toxic to people. They're not going to kill people. It's safe on people to be used on people um, in a small group. And then it moves on to phase three, uh, where it's a large scale, normally a minimum of 30,000 people. Uh, and for the two vaccines that you have in the US, both have at least 30,000 people that were tested in the phase three. Uh, so I just want to let you know that globally right now we've had over 68 million doses in 56 countries already. Uh, that equals to about 3.5 million doses a day. Um, and, and in the US, um, so far as of December, 23.5 million shots were given, 1.25 million doses a day. Um, and you can kind of see the global distribution of where these vaccines have been uh, given. Uh, in the US, again, uh, there's an increasing uptake of vaccines. Uh, 1.25 million shots were recorded each day for the last week. That's really a lot. Um, and, you know, in different countries, there's different uptake rates. Uh, so we can see Israel is about 50, 50 out of every 100 people have got the vaccine. Um, so there are various vaccine trackers out there. Uh, but as you know, the most famous one, Pfizer, Moderna. Um, and I just want to say that um, Pfizer actually and, and Moderna, both of them have over 90, uh, almost 95% effectiveness rate. Uh, and how do they calculate that? So for example, for Pfizer, in the phase three trial, um, they have 36,000 people that were, uh, were un enrolled in that phase. Uh, and out of the 36,000, they actually uh, split them up 
um, without knowing. So half of them get uh, the vaccine, the actual vaccine. The other half uh, get something that looks like the vaccine, but it's not the vaccine. It's called the placebo. Um, and based on that data, uh, out of the 36,000, uh, they showed that only eight people on the vaccine group actually developed COVID. And the placebo group, which is like the not uh, the, not the vaccine, they didn't receive the vaccine, 162 people uh, came down with COVID uh, even after getting the vaccine. So the data is uh, very similar for Moderna, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea how phase three works and that's how they, how, how they conduct that kind of experiment. And again, you know, Moderna, they had 30,000 people uh, that enrolled in that phase uh, three. And in the vaccine group, they had 11 people that came down with COVID, uh, you know, after getting a vaccine, but in the placebo group, which is not did not get the vaccine group, 185 people got the vaccine. Um, a quick word about priority groups. So uh, obviously um, the US have its own priority groups, but for those of you who are not uh, in the US, I just wanted to explain that WHO has set out a roadmap of um, how uh, countries around the world should prioritize. And uh, they've determined that it should definitely be the frontline workers first, then health or in a social type of setting, um, healthcare, uh, healthcare workers, social care workers, uh, people over the age of 65. And then for those under the age of 65, uh, but if they have underlying health conditions that put them at higher risk, those would also be prioritized. Uh, the WHO priority map uh, is actually divided into various scenarios. So the first scenario is uh, if you're in a country or a setting that has widespread community transmission, there is a, diff a set of prioritization. And if you are in a country that has just some sporadic cases here and there, there is a set of prioritization. And if you're in a country that has absolutely no case, there's a different set of priorities. So all of this is uh, mapped out in their documents. Um, a last word about some clinical issues um, that, you know, from the studies of, of these vac these two vaccines, uh, side effects are common. So these are, you know, very mild, normal side effects of vaccines. You get pain at the infection site, you get fever, headache, maybe some joint pain. Uh, it may put you out of work for one or two days, um, but it's not, not nothing really serious. It's something that it's, it's uh, that you would get uh, if you receive any other vaccine. So that, that is a side effect that has been, um, that you can get. It doesn't mean that you will get it. Uh, the duration of protection currently is not certain just simply because uh, the phase um, uh, trials haven't been gone on for long enough. So uh, we think that protection right now is up to three months, but it could be longer as, as, um, as these uh, vaccines go out, we'll get collect more information and know more. Uh, so because of that, uh, the preventive measures should all still continue. Uh, there are some contraindications, uh, which uh, maybe Dr. Rawl can mention later. Um, and you know, typically uh, after you receive a vaccine, you would want to just uh, be monitored uh, and sit down and rest for a bit for 15 to 30 minutes after your vaccine. So um, you know, you don't immediately kind of uh, go and you, you have to be observed for at least 15 minutes. Okay, so um, I think I'll